and from yesterday's uh, dinner and festivities. So uh, I'd like to start this is session five on frontiers and formal matter. So the first talk is by Zheng Yu Wen from Tsinghua University in China. And also it's on the emerging world of strong correlations of the 90s. So we to be
should be similar to others. And I think uh, uh, now in uh, the community, uh, um, many people have accepted the concept that notion that uh, Qubit probably uh, is a strongly correlated uh, systems. It does not need to be sure later because a strong onset precaution. And as first pointed out by uh, Phil Anderson in 1987's paper, that the basic building block of uh, Qubit um, materials faces the cover of the layers. And uh, the layer at half feet, where each side was wide match one, uh, will be reduced to so called multi insulator, where the speeds of electron still talking to each other through so super change interaction. But the charge fluctuation will be suppressed because the outside current portion. So it's an insulator uh, at half feeding. Uh, uh, this space has been well understood and uh, all the explained experiment uh, very well. The challenge will be a doping. So you take the electron out, you basically don't hold into the system. The holes start to uh, start to hop. Okay, Yeah, start to hop. So there's a with a hopping e to t. So this basic two parameter j and t will decide uh, this uh, single band dope multi insulator. On the other hand, the uh, in the past 30 years, a lot of intensive experiments have been done, and uh, this is a, a typical phase diagram. And you know, today's, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, which for the typical uh, dope multi insulator, where you have temperature and doping concentration. You see that the, the phase diagram is very complex and rich, where uh, in no doping, there's a spin form, non-rejected from watery, and charts are localized always. Then, uh, at site of doping, we have some critical part, and now when water is killed, the system becomes a long, a uh, human and uh, state with high TC and T with C3. But this is not conventional sugarcane data, it's a normal state, as it's called a pseudo gap. There are a lot of uh, novel properties that have been discovered and uh, explored in this regime. Um, for example, recently, a lot of debate, uh, discussion about the present of some kind of charge orders uh, or some kind of century breaking uh, happening here. Not necessarily long range order, but it uh, seems uh, computers here. And also, um, uh, if you put a temperature higher or slightly higher doping, then you reach the so called strange matter phase, which remains to be the wow, the most mysterious uh, state, uh, part of the cubic. Okay, so it's very, very rich. The interesting question and also challenging would be that uh, such a you know, single band, you know, uh, TJ, so called TJ model, uh, the, uh, there's only one type of electrons. So how come the, the same type of electrons at different temperature uh, doping concentration will self-organize themselves uh, into all the different uh, exotic uh, you know, uh, patterns, properties happening here? This would be a very challenging issue because for conventional, you know, uh, for liquid theory, uh, you, you wouldn't expect that would happen unless you have very complex, you know, more parameters and uh, very detailed, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the underlying models. So it would be challenging that uh, giving some, you know, uh, parameter that like T over J over ratio is three, so only variant parameter here is doping concentration plus temperature. How come natural would do what we see here? So uh, naturally, uh, if it works that this is a dope mounting insulator, then you would uh, expect that uh, there must be some kind of organizing principles to control electrons in a long wavelength uh, regime. Even though the model starting uh, point is some kind of short range, short range change in the hopping process. So that's an issue we gotta uh, uh, address in the following. And uh, if there's uh, some kind of uh, uh, 
the uh, long range you know, uh, organizing principles, then you would expect, uh, you would li like to see it in some uh, you know, simplified regime, uh, which uh, actually is a uh, strange matter where temperatures uh, increase high enough, so all long range shore water are melt by thermalization of uh, uh, the, uh, the high by temperature. And uh, therefore, this should be one uh, of the purest uh, case you want to look at what is out of physics. So here, uh, the strange matter, let me say a few words. And uh, it is characterized uh, by uh, two things. Why is it resistivity? Or is it linear temperature up to, there's no upper bound southern Kelvin. Uh, you still see a linear T, and uh, no, ter no temperature limits from the linear T and so called T star here. Uh, T star here, and, uh, which has a strong doping dependence. And another characteristic of uh, the string matter would be the spin. Uh, there's still a lot of spin and no doping, okay? But in such a high temperature as mentioned, all the uh, orders are melt away including the short range antiferment ordering. So in other words, the spin spin correlation lens will shrink uh, to within the one axis constant, such that the, the uh, uniform sensibility would decrease with temperature smoothly connect to the classical limit of QUS uh, case. Uh, actually, this peak uh, uh, represents the G star here. And uh, this different doping risk scale together, it looks like it can be fit very well by the Heisman model, except that J, the T star, is uh, decided by J, becomes J effective, which have strong doping dependence. So this is a strange model, hey, it's a simple degree freedom just all summarized, and uh, the, the charge will do the linear T. So what's the underlying uh, physics related to it? Actually, this uh, uh, phenomenon has been uh, noted right after the discovery of IGC, and uh, there's a, a, a very widely uh, accepted phenomenology, uh, sometimes called marginal from liquid behavior, which relates to this linear key behavior with uh, the uh, momentum energy relaxation rate, which goes to linear temperature. You see, there's no other uh, no energy scale here. And by dimension analysis, you realize that any useful energy inject to the charge degree freedom will immediately turn to heat, the entropy. So that implies this really strong scattering. Sometimes people use the terminology Kantian dissipation to this phenomenon. But this, this kind of momentum relaxation Description actually related to a weaker scattering case, which uh, actually is an almost conserved momentum, if in number of the things, the quasi particle in the Boltzmann descrip uh, description. And uh, then you have a momentum relaxation or diffusion due to a strong scattering. And uh, if you look at the people uh, partition theorem, the energy is also. The order of T. So these two are comparable. That means strong, really strong scattering in this kind of framework. And uh, people have proposed all kinds of mechanisms responsible for this near T, like a strong gauge fluctuation is a dope multi-insulated case. Also, uh, the QCP, the, the, the critical fluctuation, even APS CFT correspondence has been used to try to understand what's happening. But there's a, uh, uh, there's a pre assumption, like I mentioned here, that the head doesn't happen as a moment of relaxation. The uh, question is if this is true, uh, if this is true, then, then we expect a really strong scattering in the charge and the uh, spin uh, or, or whatever uh, the source causes scattering. So now let's go back to the, we have this uh, microscopic model, then we can you know, examine whether this uh, uh, scattering rate uh, is really uh, there. So this is uh, a TJ uh, model I, I just mentioned, and uh, we can <coughs> consider a case where the temperature is higher than G, so that all the short range of correlation uh, uh, you know, melt away, and uh, you have a QDY's heat back, the spin background. 
And on the other hand, the, the temperature is less than T, so uh, if there's no interaction, the catabatic Hawking means that you still have some wave. Like, um, in the so for the board, you will feel radio uh, regime, and momentum is still valid. Then you ask whether the, uh, there's a strong charge coupling to it, that uh, means uh, heat back. And here, actually, because it's such a high temperature, the whole whole actually coherence is no longer important. So we can focus on the image where only one hole and to see what happened. <coughs> so we we want to do it in an exact way. So this is a partition function, and uh, there's a both value distribution. You can do the, uh, the factor, you can do the pair expression, then carry out the trees. Since it involves a lot of Hawking and the super exchange. And uh, after trace, you would have a loop. All kinds of loop, how or do loop and spin will have a loop. And the summation, the package function will summation of all loops. And uh, there's a weight for such a loop, and uh, which involves T, J, and beta as well as the temperature. And, uh, and uh, you can express, they have this expression. <coughs> and all collect all the signs in the model, in, uh, in the tau C here, which associate these uh, uh, loops. It turns out that the spin loops will not have a sign, but only the charge loop will have an extra sign. Uh, and the, this sign, some of sign, I think decide by the microscope process. The whole move forward, the spin transfer back. It differentiate whether the spin transfer back is up or down, there's a minus sign. And uh, therefore, you, you, you have the system where all the times are socialist whole loops. And it looks like uh, there's a so-called barrel phase and associate the, the, uh, the host pad. Uh, it's called a phase string effect. Okay. Uh, you don't see the Fermion sign anymore, by the way. So at half feeding, without hole, there's, there's no any sign. And this, we know has to model there's a sign free problem. But once you don't hold, uh, the, this, uh, this sign will come up, which is solely decided by the total number of downspin, for example, it changes with the whole. So this even odd, but who should I decide whether this side will be positive or negative? This is a very uh, peculiar thing, because we start from local model, TGA, it still has only two you know, local process, Hawking and super change. But, but in this expression, you see that no matter what the temperature is, this for arbitrary temperature, Actually, uh, it can be also easily generalized to finite OT. And uh, you have such a memory of the host, which is pure quantum mechanical uh, origin. And uh, so, such that even you raise the temperature to this so called the human wise regime, the host still remembers the, 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 the <coughs> sign, no matter how large the moon is. So this is a really quantum memory of its history, and uh, which uh, you would expect will have some very uh, strong consequences. And just to be clear, that's uh, that's J, that's J star in that expression, right? Uh, where's J star? Right here. Should that be J star? The, this one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the final dopey would be J star, right. but uh, if, if the one whole limit, then it turns out J. I will look at the simplest case first. So we found that, that uh, this uh, this kind of microscopic model, there's a quantum memory effect, which seems to provide uh, something to draw of how charge, uh, you know, uh, um, motion in the long distance. Uh, and, uh, and also, if you think that charge move to one uh, place to another from different path, then we will pick up different type of phase because this depends on spin background. So that tells you this place will be long integral. And uh, just like uh, then you different paths will have strong interference effect. That's quantum, right? The quantum basically tells you how we propagate different way, different paths will have a you know the superposition get you get you destructive interference or unstructured. And uh, this implies of that. And uh, so let's look uh, take a look at the this extreme image where the T is larger than T star, which is decide the uh, the the uh, spin spin correlation that is shrink within to a uh, nice constant. And if you have finite loop, uh, this total size 
will have no control. You cannot say it's even hard because Smith's correlation length is so short, you cannot control it. So you would expect in this regime, when back speed backgrounds were summarized, this kind of path will be all suppressed because of strong quantum destructive interference. So, so there is no contribution basically to the package function. The only contribution, the lack of it, actually, principle is related to the so-called breaking rise to a traceable path. So the charge goes one way and then it has to quickly go back to erase its uh, you know, the side. And, but because this is a finite shape, so you, the, the, this kind of path will be very short. And uh, this tells you that somehow because of the quantum effect, the charge would be pinned at that side. But it's impossible, right? Because quantum, you know, I'm certain in principle, it has to, because translation required, charge should be anywhere, right? So there's a quantum terminal here, which will play a role as a random walk to cause a whole random walk on matches. And uh, so it's ironic that uh, you have quantum effect, but because the spin degree freedom is summarized, and uh, eventually the whole will behave like a classical random wide particle, and uh, which normally will, will be de de uh, determined by the diffusion constant, which I would base on that constant and this model's dimension, which is two thousand times stay at that side. And by using the, the uncertain principle, you can turn this into H bar divided by two uh, uh, over the effect mass, which is inverse proportional effect power is zero. So this is like a quantum originated from the motion, and the using Einstein's uh, uh, was this Kantian dissipation, but without momentum. And uh, so using uh, then you can write down mobility, uh, uh, which goes like a e divided by a p, and then we write receptivity, and uh, n h is the number of a hole. Suppose the whole hole occurs loud in order here, then we find that it's really linear t uh, dependent. But you still need to fix the, the number here. You can do it exactly by looking at the current current correlation body. And but another way, simpler way is that we know the qubits. There's a well-known uh, so-called Holmes law, which relates to conductivity at TC plus by TC equal to the zero frequency plasma frequency. Um, you've taken the charge susceptibility to go like one over. The one over the temperature. The, uh, the, this is a, yeah, well, uh, basically it's a classical limit where you have this uh, compressibility goes to our T. But that would require temperature, very high temperature, at the point of what finite doping. Yeah, this is very important. Yeah. Uh, normally, the normal system is very high, but now we have this quantum interference, which would reduce the temperature of the uh, whole is true. No, no, G. True one hole, but it won't be true when you go 10% yeah. For, for more hole, the I resistance to be even decrease or become P star. The only characteristic is the spin spin correlation should shrink to the or less that would one. imply a massively huge charge stability yeah. in the normal state. Yeah, that's right. consistent with the presence of a Fermi surface. No, 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 no. So this is a something, uh, uh, that's a key point, yeah. So, uh, if you think the home row where the, this uh, number is reversible, and all the, this is uh, the qubit and other materials goes like this rule, as it turns out this relation will satisfy Home's rule, and uh, by using this uh, universal number, you can either fix the uh, uh, defect mass at the high temperature with the ground, the, you know, the low temperature defect mass, turns out the <coughs> which is slightly the two, two is that a small disorder, and you would have a yeah, so T2, so it's quite reasonable you can have a, a, a receptivity in frequency experiment. Oh, it's great. Okay, uh, all right, uh, jump, uh, so, um, so uh, we see that uh, the TJ actually harm model as well, uh, unless you have a whole opening of the ball gap, and uh, you have such a long move, you know, uh, the, memory of the sign of the charge, and uh, if the spin background goes like uh, uh, the uh, 
to the, the edge from an origin scum, we have a strong suppression of this loop thing, and it turns out the, the charge will do strange metal behavior, where this is not momentum, uh, inflation picture is basically in color, in color metal. Now, uh, back to uh, the, uh, okay, you may have already noticed that the charge translation seems to be spoken because charge go from here to here, it, it depends on path. Uh, but we should note that this doesn't contradict to the translational symmetry of the main body because if we move the charges spin together, uh, the, of course the translational symmetry is there, but it's not for liquid. Now the spins are all localized because of physics. Uh, to the lattice, then we charge relatively move, move toward, you know, relative to the spin background, and uh, this is something which breaks the charge translation. So, so this is very important, that's why there is no momentum discretion here. But now I raise a, a decrease of temperature so that the spin starts to develop correlation. Then you find that you use this kind of loop will have contribution now because you want to cancel out all together, and then there's a strong intertwined waters, and from my water with uh, the, this charge, translational symmetry breaking uh, property. So that's where you, know, uh, you expect <laughs> charge variability. Uh, if key starts reduced, <coughs> you can have a pseudo gap regime where the correlation very complicated uh, will come out of this effect. So in the last those three minutes, I will give you a quick example of what's happening in the hot you know, ground state where you have antiferment correlations. But we will do it in an accurate way, so we are in a numerical way, and we can, the two dimensions are hot. So we can cut the, the, uh, the uh, two dimensional system into a ladder, which we can do the numerical simulation, and we can tune the ladder so such a smooth correlation lens could be changed by its short range, and uh, then we put well, I'll call it two code to see what happened. Okay, and uh, this is a numerical uh, simulation done by uh, two of my former students. And uh, it turns out if the alpha is from control parameter with correlation is very short, you find that the, the whole world, just like a quasi particle, with a well defined momentum and the, the real space distribution, open boundary is the smooth curve. But once you increase of uh, antiferment correlation by tuning the parameter, such that uh, the correlation is long, then you find a critical point where the, this is the ground energy, which is critical point here, and then there's a dramatic change of the post motion. You see momentum uh, distribution now you reconstruct the split. There's a single momentum now two with some broad feature. And then in the real space, Profile, there's a charge modulation come out. This charge modulation can be easily understood by the phase interference of this loop. Okay? And, uh, and this modulation uh, related to the split of P, but you see there's also continuum background. It tells you, direct tells you this translational centrifuge. Because uh, otherwise, if this is uh, just a standing wave of two momentum, you wouldn't expect that a broad background. And, uh, so, so you see that uh, this is the case. If you put oh, sorry, if you put Foucault in this system, and you found that this modulation will be down, but then you get a strong bending in, in this side. But in the quasi particle side, the bending energy is basically zero. So it tells us. Uh, so, so compared to the 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 uh, phase diagram for the pupils, that's doping uh, tuning the uh, spin correlation. Now I choose an artificial two uh, uh, ladder uh, system tuning uh, the antiferron correlation. When the correlation length is really short, you you find that actually you become quasi particle with all these the string down. And uh, but with increase of the uh, the uh, antiferron correlation, you have the charge modulation, the reconstruction of momentum distribution, and uh, it tells you that uh, really what happened. Here uh, may have a strong resemblance in this uh, kind of model. Um, okay, uh, I think um, I don't have much time. I I just want to emphasize one more thing: is that 
what I've shown you this effect uh, actually is really uh, related to this constraint. Right? So for the TGM model, this uh, Hilbert space constraint is really important. If you relax this constraint, the, the effect will be gone. And we have we have done similar simulation for the a, a calculation for a Harbor model. In that case, you still have this screen, but then you have to open the model again uh, to, to, to protect this screen. Uh, so uh, I want to get into the, uh, your, the Microsoft uh, uh, study of this uh, problem. Uh, I think I will make a conclusion here. Uh, and uh, the the take home message is that. For the dope mouse insulator, as described by TGL Harbor model, actually there is this uh, uh, a long range uh, effect, which emerging from this local uh, model, uh, which we call it novel uh, quantum memory effect, or phase string effect, where the whole uh, spin will entangle in a long range, so uh, a local way. And, uh, I showed you, I, I tried to convince you that actually this place is an organizing principle for how the host of the system uh, behave. A strange metal where the background spin are all summarized, and you find that uh, it goes like a, becomes an incorporate metal. Uh, on the other hand, if the incorporation develops the ground, the, the low temperature, then this kind of uh, memory effect will uh, lead to very, very interesting properties like a momentum reconstruction, time modulation, and impairing. And uh, uh, especially, I should mention that charge modulation here is from quantum interference. It's not like charge density wave because of classical interaction of particles. That's a key issue. So I uh, hope, uh, yeah, okay, I think I should stop here. Thank you for your. What do the charges look like in the charge density wave? Um, uh, oh. I guess it's on. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I didn't draw the. Uh, okay. When you, okay. When you look at this uh, uh, charge module, this is basically a quasi wide dimension, two black ladder. So this is along the ladder direction. You have this population. There's a wave vector, which it depends on the alpha. So there's a quick point here. And uh, it, here, you don't have to have smooth. Curve. So there's a time modulation, and the wave vector become finite here, and uh, it goes specially. So. Is it linear in the doping or something? No. Uh, oh, this is just uh, this is just one whole case. So we have finite OP. You uh, would have in the short energy phase or the short gap phase. Uh, you have many many charge. So the superposition of all these modulation. So it's not like a part part interaction. Oh, oh, part part interaction. More like this. Yeah. Do you think that would correspond to the the peak that with the, the pseudo gap and with the observed charge order at low temperatures? Yeah, uh, uh, there's a strong indication for that, and uh, but uh, the, uh, but remarkably you cannot get access to that region, so we have to put a limit uh, to seal that. But at least for yes, there's a, uh, a strong impact in questions uh, about wavelengths. Turns out that. The isotope in the alpha equal to one here is the wavelengths, uh, uh, at least for the shared, uh, the two light ladder is, is close to four. It's something close to four. So it's experimentally, it's, uh, the two dimension, four by four, here, four by four. Um, with respect to the DMRG calculations, one has to be careful with open systems because you can. Uh, you can stay stuck in a metastable state. Yeah. Uh, so, so one has to be very careful with that. And, and the other point I wanted to say is that uh, the, uh, one has to also rule out completely the, the possible existence of Friedel oscillations due to the open boundary condition. Because you're, you're talking about momentum. Yeah. And uh, so you have an open system, and you, one has to know how to deal with that. Um, by looking so only at the middle of the chain and, and, and putting filter functions, I mean, it's, it's a delicate uh, yeah. uh, way of dealing with it. So my, my question is, 
are you sure about those results? I mean, have you been careful enough in, 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 in the numerical simulations that you're not stuck in a metastable state? Well, that, yeah, that's a very uh, important issue. Uh, yes, uh, you have to be careful, but we have done uh, the uh, uh, oh, one thing is about this, uh, this uh, momentum. You know, what's the, the basically, the quantizations come from open boundary, right? If you have your, uh, okay, if you have finite system, then you have momentum quantization. That's how you <coughs> say if, the, uh, if it's a free particle, like uh, in the uh, this regime, you would find that actually there's a, you know, and you see momentum, this finite size you find. Then you have to finite size scale uh, to show that it will go to infinity. Uh, size go to infinity, really shrink to one point. But here we, we found that when you do degree of size, this is a state that converge this state. And actually, this is uh, confirmed by other groups, uh, the critical point and, uh, and uh, things by C. White, uh, Scalabino, and Kilson's uh, work. They also reproduce this critical point and uh, modulation. But their interpretation of modulation is that this is a steady wave. But that's not correct in the sense that you, if you look at momentum, there's a, besides the two peaks, there's a broad feature here. And the, when you finance that scale, it's still there. So that if you stand away, you would be expected to become nodes. You, you actually here, because stand away will be like that. But because of this momentum, the broad momentum feature here, you have a broad feature here. So that's what uh, we believe is different, different from just simple stand away of two wing vector. And uh, yeah, the uh, BMRG, uh, you really have to be careful about the whole thing. That is a question that's pretty common. Um, the, uh, the, notion, the notion of a conductivity going like 1 over T is certainly something you have for negative view systems, uh, negative view uh, convolutus and things like that. Um, my concern here, though, applying that idea to the cuprates is that a, di a constant diffusion rate is really a temperature independent scattering rate. Right. Whereas we know that the marginal Fermi liquid theory has a temperature dependent scattering rate around the Fermi surface. So I'm concerned that you can't use the idea of a, of a constant diffusion rate and a temperature dependent charge susceptibility when the evidence is for a constant charge susceptibility and a temperature dependent scattering rate. So, so uh, yeah, here, the, yeah, this is a very, very uh, important uh, point, and uh, that's why uh, this implies that uh, the uh, marginal from liquid uh, is different from this kind of picture. Right? Okay. Uh, so so uh, the, if the, there's a momentum uh, cell work, and uh, then you need high sum relation for ground motion, D will go like a rubber T, uh, uh, to linear T, because they, they see uh, equal partition. If you have a Curie susceptibility. Yeah, that's right, right. But here, it turns out that this becomes constant and minimal of this H bar. You know? So that's a key thing. And the temperature dependence only comes from the compressed species. For the pH. This is crucial difference. Uh, the, uh, but the, uh, for the cube, it's, uh, uh, it's from this argument, the important is that the temperature is reduced to have this kind of behavior, to reduce a very, very high temperature, the bad ways to a order of J for the echo case, precisely because you uh, suppress uh, all this kind of contribution. Otherwise, it won't be there. But doesn't Arpus show very clearly that the scattering rate grows linearly with the temperature? Oh, yeah, you are right. And actually, uh, the, uh, the, we use some, uh, you know, to add the formulation of the problem, uh, we can calculate uh, uh, this is a conductivity as a function of frequency. Low temperature does have a similar thing, uh, like linear, not really linear. Uh, the, but if you look at carefully, you find that actually it's not this uh, scattering rate as linear T is not correct. And uh, it turns out it, at least uh, this linear T behavior is consistent with what happened here. But you, uh, so that in other words, even though it looks like the, the, the ways of the, you know, the, this, uh, uh, it's still there, have some weak temperature dependence, but it's not, uh, you know. Any other question? Yeah, sure. Last question, probably. Hi, uh, actually I missed the, the early part of your talk, so maybe you mentioned 
Uh, I have two questions. One uh, is about uh, how do you define that lattice charge, the, the loop? Yeah. And uh, because it seems the net charge is positive. And the other question is, so general, I just uh, want to know what exactly the pseudo gap is. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, this is a lot of yeah, good questions about loop here. Let me go back to the okay. Uh, so you asked about the loop chart. Yeah. Actually, this is summation for all loops. So it's like a path into uh, picture. The, the, the contribution of the thermodynamical quantity will be uh, composed of all kinds of loops. You allow all kinds of loops, which is weighted by some factor, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what we tune here is that any of these loop will be modulated by a certain sign, which is like very phase. And uh, so you have to, the deeper part will be the physical quantum. So single loop doesn't tell you physical quantum. You need to sum up all kinds of loops. That's the deeper part. And so that's why we grossly we have to use the, the game archie to <coughs> effectively do the job. So, uh, yeah, so, but you look at uh, each individual loop, you will see this uh, seed of, uh, you know, uh, of how the, uh, the spin modulates uh, the, the uh, how the spin modulates the charge of motion. But you need to sum up all of them. Okay, so you mean, uh, because I see some, you have positive minus, yeah. I assume it's for spin direction. So, how did you, I mean, how, you just put that uh, spin uh, yeah. confirmation. So, so basically, uh, when you, you move on this spin background, spins are strongly fluctuating. So it depends on spin. So you see this word, either this loop about both charges spin, and then you, this kind of sign is strongly fluctuating. So you have to sum up all possibilities. Uh -huh. So that's why I push to a very high temperature, the above star, or all spin are disordered. So that's the all this mm -hmm. kind of loop of this contribution of this. Oh, okay. But the ground state is totally different story. That's why oh, okay. I emphasize. So, uh, so this relates to uh, what your question about the the, uh, the sugar gap. Uh, and actually, uh, there there are several sugar gap characteristic the temperature. The, the top one is uh, according here to relate to spin spin correlation. So this P star represents the uh, the turning on the storage edge from. Mm -hmm. And which will strongly affect this charge motion. Then there's other, you know, characteristic energy scale or temperature scale associated with all kinds of pattern emerging. But the top one where this related is the theory is related to spin spin correlation. Okay, so, so why did? Well, maybe you can continue. Okay. Running yeah. a little late, so let's thank our experiments we've recently conducted on them using a technique involving nonlinear optics. So, as the previous speaker already alluded to, um, if you look at two parameters in a solid, the strength of electron electron interactions and strength of spin orbital coupling on the other axis, you've already seen that if I turn up the strength of cool interactions between electrons in a solid, you get interesting phenomena, um, like the Mott insulator pseudo-gap high to superconductivity we just heard about. And especially over the last, I would say, decade or so, um, this spin orbit coupling axis has also been, become very important to highlight the trans matter, um, giving birth to phases like topological insulators, topological superconductors, and so forth. And so my talk today is actually going to be about this fourth uh, quadrant of this phase diagram, where both of these interactions become concretely strong. And we'll talk about some interesting physics that can emerge when these two uh, strong parameters are present in the same song. So, whereas the cuprates are composed of uh, you know, copper that lies in the 3D row of transition metal oxides, uh, my talk is going to be focused on materials that are composed of transition metals in the 5D row. Okay, so, as you march down the periodic table, 
uh, as the wave function, uh, as the spatial extent of the, the orbitals gets larger, uh, the strength of the Coulomb interactions goes down because the electrons are not so heavily confined near the nucleus. Uh, but at the same time, as the nucleus gets heavier, the strength of spin over coupling goes up. And so this fine transition metal row is sort of a natural place where these two interactions can be expected to balance one another out. Um, and sort of what comes for free is this um, fact that the crystal and electric field energy scales also balance out the spin over coupling and Coulomb interactions. So you get this interesting interplay between many energy scales in these so-called 5D transition metal oxides. So my talk today is going to be about this particular compound, strontium 2 uranium 4 that has intimate relations with the cuprates. I'll start off by describing some basics of this compound, what we know up to date. Uh, and then I'll talk about our technique that we've developed based on this nonlinear optical process. And finally, I'll show some results that we've uh, um, recently collected on this compound and discuss its relationship to the cuprates at this time of the end. Okay, so you know, for me, two or three slides to give you some basic bare bones background of this compound. Lanthanum cuprate is a parent compound of high TC superconductors. Right? It's, a, it's a layered perovskite structure that consists of copper atoms that, are, that form this square lattice. Each copper atom is octahedrally coordinated um, by oxygen atoms. And these octahedra are corner sharing in geometry. And if you take sort of planar slices, through these copper oxygen plates that are denoted by these uh, gray planes, um, and you project them onto a plane of the board, then uh, this is what they look like. You've got copper atoms sort of forming the square lattice, and then you've got a square coordination of oxygen atoms around it. Okay? And the stacking sequence is, is as so. The starting iridate is a closed structural analog. Okay? So it's basically the same structure uh, with the one adjustment that there's this sub-lattice canting. So, you, so every other oxygen, uh, the iridium oxygen octahedra sort of twists in an opposite sense that forms this two sub-lattice structure. But otherwise, the structures are, are um, isomorphic to one another. Magnetically, they're also remarkably similar. So in the cuprates, at least in the parent phase, below uh, about room temperature, you get this anti-permanent quarter and spin half degrees of freedom on each side. And in the irrigate, because of the strong spin arm coupling, you can no longer think about spins alone, but you can think of sort of J effective angular momentum half degrees of freedom that are localized on the iridium sites. And similarly, below somewhere around room temperature, uh, these J effective equal half moments of order anti magnetically, just like in the cuprates, again with the one revision that these moments are going to point along the canon direction of the octahedron. Um, this will become important later, but I want to say this up front that this structure, both magnetic and crystallographic, has been refined by a host of diffraction-based techniques, and uh, it's been shown that the magnetic structure obeys this MMM1 prime point group, where the M's denote, denote mirror planes along the A, B, A, C, and B, C planes, and the 1 prime denotes identity and time reversal symmetry, which I'll come back to in a few slides. So, despite the fact that these orbitals are really large in the, in the iridium oxides, uh, which might naively lead you to expect that they're metals, they turn out to be insulators at low temperatures. Okay? And a very sort of single ion picture of why this is so um, is the following. So, think of one iridium oxygen octahedron. The uh, valence state is iridium 4 plus, which leaves five electrons in this 5D um, uh, manifold of orbitals. Under the crystal electric field of this octahedral cage, that splits it up into this EG uh, uh, doublet and this T2G triplet. The T2Gs are filled, um, with the exception of one uh, electron, and the EGs are empty. We turn on now strong spin orbit coupling, and what happens is that the T2Gs get further mixed into these J effective one half and three halves bands or, or levels. The three halves get filled. The one half is half filled, so this looks like a half filled uh, single band model. And because of spin orbit coupling, this J effective equal half band is actually very narrow. And so moderate amounts of on site cooling interactions are sufficient to open up a charge gap. Okay, so you get 
um, a situation that's akin to what uh, models of the place look like. So this is the band structure. You take these single lines, you put them in this uh, you know, layer of perovskite structure, you get a band structure that looks like this. Um, in first principles, LG plus spin orbit. Here I'm ignoring uh, cone interactions for the time being. You get a metallic band structure that looks like this. Right? So you have this upper and lower hover band. If you, for example, take a cut uh, at this dotted line, you see all these Fermi surfaces start forming. You get these lens-like shapes near the zone boundaries. You get holes near the uh, zone center and so forth. And by turning on U a little bit, um, you open up this gap between the lower and upper bands, lower and upper hover bands, and you get, a, you get an insulator. And this is just showing a cut below the Fermi level that sort of just you know, gives you an illustration of the Fermiology you can expect. Okay, so herein, all, herein comes the similarity of Cooperings. So someone asked in the last uh, talk about, about the pseudo gap, so I'll give you a uh, an experimental description. So basically what's, what's been discovered in electron doped strontium air date is that at large at large doping levels, if you just slide electrons into it, you melt this mod insulator, this J vector people have mod insulator, you form this big Fermi surface, okay, that's circular in shape, like this. But as you reduce the doping, as you go march back towards the parent compound, this Fermi surface does something very strange, namely you know, rather than shrink or grow that you might expect, it <coughs> turns, uh, it becomes fragmented into these segments called Fermi arcs. So here what I'm putting on, well, and these folks are putting on half a model layer of potassium for the electron dopants. The Fermi surface, you know, has this arc-like shape and it gets completely suppressed over here in these horizontal and vertical directions of momentum space. So these Fermi arcs are, are sort of signatures of what's called pseudo-gap, because it's pseudo gap, it's not fully gap. Um, and if you follow sort of the size of the gap as you as this function of angle from this diagonal direction to let's say the horizontal, then you can see that that gap is zero along the diagonal and slowly starts growing as you get towards the x the uh, kx direction. So these gap sizes I should note are, are comparable to what you find in the Cooperage pseudo gap. 